So this is a butternut squash soup starter. We cannot puree butternut squashes during canning. So this is how I came up with a soup starter. I also use this as a pasta sauce starter, which I will go over a little bit more later in the video. Right now I am getting my pressure canner started along with getting my jars heated up. This is a raw packing method. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna dice up all of our vegetables and cover them with broth or water. I use broth. So actually in preparation of this, the day, probably a couple days before this, I made some more broth with a ton of scraps that I had in my freezer. So this is the broth that I will be using in the recipe, but you of course can just use water or you can get two boxes of store-bought broth. We want hot broth to pour over our vegetables. So I just put my broth in a small stock pot, put it on some medium heat and let that simmer while I was peeling and dicing the rest of the vegetables. Now these butternut squashes are from the garden. Actually, just one of them is. I think the other one I bought at the grocery store. Anyway, they have been sitting downstairs in my pantry for a while. Now butternut squashes in particular, have a very long shelf life. You don't have to actually can them, but I like to do this recipe, especially when I get some squashes that I'm kind of like stuck with because I find peeling and prepping them <laughs> kind of tedious. So when I come across a squash like this that's been kind of sitting around getting stuck in my pantry, I like to put this recipe together, this canning recipe together, because it's almost like meal prepping. If in a way canning is like meal prepping, except for you have much longer than a week to eat your food. <laughs> but what's nice about this is that the butternut squashes are peeled and then the canning process then cooks them. And then we are adding carrots, onion, and celery, which gives the butternut squashes a lot of flavor, a lot more flavor, I should say. And then with the broth, it's honestly, it's ready to go. You can make, like I said earlier, a soup, which I like to use butternut squash soup, like a tomato soup. So I like to serve it with a really crunchy sandwich or a grilled cheese sandwich or something like that. You can also make it into a pasta sauce too, like a squash based pasta sauce. I find butternut squashes to be delicious if you cook them right. <laughs> Sometimes they are a little bland, but this recipe is not bland. You have the help of the other vegetables. Plus butternut squashes hold up very well to canning. And I almost think they taste better canned than if you were to just roast them in the oven or anything like that. Plus this is a pretty frugal canning recipe. A little goes a long way. You don't need several pounds of food to make these jars. If you are gonna do it in quart jars, this makes about four quart jars. I am gonna do it in pint jars and I fit eight pint jars plus a little extra, which I will show you in just a minute. Okay, the other ingredients that you're gonna need is a half a pound of carrots, three large celery stalks, a medium onion, and then we're gonna do broth and salt in a little bit. I just put all my chopped vegetables in a bowl and mix them up yourself. You can layer them in the jars if you want. Honestly, this is faster if you just mix it all up in a bowl. It's kind of a game of Tetris anyway, because we are going to tightly pack the jars, but you have to leave an inch headspace, which is kind of tricky with some of these bigger pieces of squash but I did pint jars that's just what um, fits our family's needs better we never need a quart jars worth of butternut squash soup um, a pint jar is just enough like I said earlier we kind of use it as a dip to to sandwiches so we don't need a quart jar but go ahead and fill your jars leaving an inch headspace and then after this we're gonna pour our now hopefully your broth or or water I mean i you need to simmer your water too. Pour your hot broth over the vegetables. Again, we're gonna debubble really well, get the pieces moved around a little bit, and make sure we have an inch headspace in the end. So I was able to fill eight pint jars with this. Honestly, if you're doing quarts, so that's four quarts, but I did pint jars and I even had just a little bit of extra, which I ended up just boiling and giving to my dog anyway later in the day. Uh, but 
if you are finding pieces that just won't like submerge under that inch headspace just take it out it's okay to have extra left over but if you overfill your jar you can lead to siphoning and lead to it not sealing so really just pay attention to your headspace here as you debubble, you can add more broth like I did to make sure you get to that inch mark. After all of this, we are going to wipe our rims and put our bands and lids on finger tight. Then we're gonna load our pressure canner. At this point, your pressure canner should be warmed up. I was able to fit the eight pint jars into my pressure canner, but of course, follow the instructions to your specific pressure canner because each of them work just a little bit differently. We are going to pressure can this at 10 pounds pressure, adjusting for altitude. Pint jars need to be done for 60 minutes. After the 60 minutes is done and your pressure canner has naturally lost all its pressure and cooled down a bit, you can put your jars on a dry tea towel and let them sit for a day undisturbed. Again, I will mention this, just try not to pop the lids down yourself, let them pop by themselves. But these are done. After this, I will wash them and put them up on my shelf. But this is how I turn this jar of food into a creamy butternut squash soup. Simply pour the jar into a small sauce pot. I added half and half, but you can do heavy cream. Add about one or two tablespoons of butter, and then you can add your seasonings. I did onion powder, garlic powder, and just a dash of cayenne pepper. There is plenty of wiggle room, so just use whatever sounds good. Ginger goes well with this too, if you want to use that. Go ahead and blend it. I will say you gotta be careful with the immersion blender because it likes to spray everywhere, but just blend it until it is smooth. And then you're gonna add about two tablespoons of flour and whisk that in and it should be nice and thick and the cream and the butter will make it creamy. Serve it up. I like to add chopped green onions. I like to use my herb oil on top of it and I even like to put pumpkin seeds on top of my soup. Of course you can top it with whatever you want but that is how I prepare it and honestly we usually use our bread as a spoon or sandwich or whatever because it is just so good. I will make sure the recipe for this is linked down below. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>